Hi, and um, welcome again to our YouTube channel. And uh, this time we're gonna do something just a little bit different. Um, you know, we've done a lot of Photoshop. We've done quite a bit of Lightroom now. We've been out and about, we've done some landscape work, but <sighs> do you know what? Outside, it's pretty grim. It's raining, it's cold, it's blowy. And it's one of those days where you, you don't really wanna be going out. So, um, I just thought it'd be a nice thing just to mess about with some things inside and um, and maybe give you a different view of uh, of my office because you know normally you you sit looking that way towards my desk and my screens and you know today I've got a board on um, on my desk so you get to look this way and see and see the other side for a change. Um, not terribly exciting, I do agree, but um, yeah, just a change, isn't it? So what we're going to do today is um, we're going to mess about with um, doing some kind of still life photography, maybe producty, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, and we're going to do that in a different way rather than just set up all your lights and, 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 um, and, and take the time to do it what I would say traditionally. We're going to do it using high speed sync on the camera. Now, for those of you who don't know what high speed sync is, um, high speed sync is the ability to get the camera to shoot with a speed light. Got one here, uh, a speed light. Um, or any flash uh, strobe above what is the sync speed for the camera. Now, normally, um, depending on whether you use Canon, Nikon or Sony, it's around 200, 250th of a second. Um, but when you use a product called High Speed Sync, which is built into most cameras, you actually have the ability to go above that speed um, and start to shoot with strobes and, and flash around about, um, you know, up to, up to a few thousandth of a second. And which is what we're going to do today. Today we are going to take a photograph of this glass filled with this whiskey with this ice. So a picture like this. There we go. Um, so th that's the picture we're going to try and take today and I'm going to show you um, how to do it. So first of all camera. Uh, as I said, high speed sync, uh, there is a setting on, on most cameras to do high speed sync. It's normally in the flash speed uh, uh, area and um, you just have to find that, Google it yourself. Um, I'll put some links down below to, uh, to help you. Um, and once you've set that, um, we can go into manual mode on our camera. And for this, um, I'm thinking I'm probably gonna shoot at about F8. And I'm thinking, oh, I wanna get about one thousandth of a second, maybe a bit more. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to make this white piece of plastic black in the final image. So the first thing we're going to do is I've got no flash set up at all. I am going to put those settings into my camera and I'm going to take a very quick test shot and the whole image should be absolutely black. So I just do that now. So here we are and just Clicking that round, and there we go. We're on 1,000th of, of a second. We'll try that. And F8. Using ISO 64 on, on this Nikon. Um, and let's have a quick look at that image. And there we go. It's a perfectly black square with no light in it whatsoever. Perfect for the starting position for high speed sync. Because Everything that we are now going to take a photograph of is going to be lit by these um, by these speed lights that we're going to use in a moment or two. We are not going to change any more settings on the camera. Just for information, the lens I'm using today is a uh, oh, it's a Nikon macro lens. It's kind of a focal length. It's a 105, I think. Uh, I never remember what it is. I think it's a 105. Let's have a look on this side. There oh, we go. Yeah, 105 uh, f2.8, fantastic macro lens. Um, just really crystal sharp where, where you need it to be on f8. That's arguably in, in its sweet spot. Um, we are going to use um, this glass, which we will position about there. We'll, we'll get the exact framing of it um, now. We'll just move it. Oh, my arm is long enough. Um, well, I'll put it back there. I just want to get it. You know what, I could move the camera, but since the camera's on its tripod, I don't need to move the camera because the glass moves and it's easier to move the glass than it is to start moving the tripod. And there we go. So that's uh, absolutely spot on, right in, the, right in the middle of the frame. And I'm just about ready to go. All of our pictures are going to be 
completely lit by speed lights. So to light the speed lights, we're gonna need some speed lights. I've got a couple here, um, there's one. And on the top of the camera now, I have got um, a trigger. This is a, uh, a really simple trigger. This one's made by a company called Pixel King. Um, Pocket Wizards are another one that's, that's very popular. Um, and there's lots of uh, very cheap, inexpensive, uh, sort of Chinese uh, Far Eastern products like the Newar type tools that, uh, that work really well and are expensive. Um, like, like the Pixel, sorry, like the, uh, the Pocket Wizards, this Pixel King has the ability for me to control the power of the flashes from this unit itself, which means that uh, in a situation where the flashes are far away from you, you do not need to start messing about going to the flashes to change the power. You can change the power all from here. It's a really useful uh, tool to, uh, to have if you, if you need it. Let's just test, I've plugged it in, so let's just test that uh, this speed light, which has got a receiver on the bottom, and then, um, and then it's got a flash itself. Let's just make sure that's working. Yep. And what we're gonna do with this speed light is um, it is set to 1 64th power. We might change that, but let's just see what that does. And what I'm gonna do, there's nothing sophisticated about this. This speed light is gonna sit about there. Now the key thing is, because that speed light is right behind the glass, as you can see, that we don't want the speed light to be visible across the sides of, um, of the glass. So just have a, let's have a quick look through there and we can't see the speed light. Once again, we just took a test shot to see what that looks like. There we go. And we just check that. And as you can see already, with, with no messing about, just look at this image. We've got the glass nicely lit through the speed light. Um, and uh, we've got the, the, a little bit of a white line where the, where the light the, is leaking out from the flash to the one side and the other. And then we're starting to see a reflection in the, in the white of the, of the, of the plastic. Um, I think that's pretty much okay to start with. I was thinking about changing the power. Well, it was a bit, bit of a good look on, on the power setting for the, for the camera, for the lenses, sorry, for the flashes we start, but I'm gonna leave that. So what I wanna do next, before we get too carried away, I just wanna put something in that glass because that might change the way that, um, that things are, are working. So I have here some ice. I've got quite a lot of ice. Ice is great, um, but it means that things get wet and uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm a bit of an expert when it comes to getting cameras wet. Um, as uh, recently I dropped a, a, a very good Nikon D750 into a lake and um, it hasn't worked since. Um, but there you go, that's life, isn't it? Um, so what we'll do now is we will take some of this ice and we will just quite happily dump it Whoa, into, not too much, into our glass. Now, I should have done this before. What we need to do is just give everything a bit of a, a bit of a clean down. Because what we don't want is lots of bits of dust and flecks and things. Um, on our, uh, I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna clean the front of the glass because one thing you, you, you can't get away from, and it does happen, is uh, fingerprints on glass. And uh, you know, when you're shooting through glass, you, you, especially when you're backlit, if you've got your fingerprints on there, you, you are gonna see them. So we've done that, that's nice and clean. Let's now take another test shot and see what that looks like. So here we go. Click to click. Let's take a look. Quick preview, we start now, now all immediately now, because we put the glass, the, the, the ice in, we're starting to disperse the light a little bit more. So I think we probably will increase the power of the light just a little bit. I'll do it on the flash because it's, it's just so close. So I'm just gonna push that up to 132nd of, of, its, of its power. Right, is that in line still? Yes, it is. Let's take another shot and B, 
bingo. And now I started to highlight some of the some of the ice in the in the glass. I think we might have a piece too much in there. I'm going to take that out, and uh, we'll see what that what that does in a few moments. So we've we've taken that shot. What I want to do now is before I put some brown liquid in there, I just want to put one more speed light on this, just to highlight from the sides. Because we're using a cut glass here, I just want to highlight some of these cuts in the um, in the glass and see, just see what that does. So I'm using another speed light here. And this one, it's got a tube on the end of it. Now, they call this a snoot, but, um, and this is a purpose-built one that goes onto a, onto a speed light. And what this does is rather than the speed light just coming out the end of the flash gun and going wherever it goes, that was a good idea, wasn't it? Just click the end off. Um, the, the, the snoot kind of controls the, um, controls the light and, and turns it into a beam. So you can almost focus it on, on, a, on a particular point where you want to send that. And what we want to do here is point it straight at that, that, that glass. Now, what I will say is, these snoods are great, but, and this is a purpose-made one, but you, you could do this yourself. You, you could use a, some, some wound-up card, you could use a, a crispy a Pringles-type tube or something like that, and uh, it doesn't need to be a purpose-built um, product. Now, if I stand that up, that's going to go straight over the top of the glass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lay it down a bit. Once again, it flips up. There's always a tool. There we go. We're going to use a body cap for uh, just to hold that in position. And that is just going to push light now straight at the, the glass. Now, I've got this on a that's at 132nd. Let's see what that looks like when we take that picture. Here we go. Let's take a look at that. Marvellous. Now what you've seen there is that we've started to pick up some of the highlights now in the glass. So in the ice itself, which, uh, which is a great place to, uh, to be. Right, next we're going to start playing with the drink. Now I might drink some of that, but I think I'll put it in the glass first. So let's get some of this brown liquid. And let's pour it into this glass. Let's not waste too much. See what's happening now. Straight away those um, ice cubes that we've got in there are starting to float. Which will, will allow the, the, the light to, to come through the, the, um, the, the whiskey underneath and, uh, and, and highlight some of the glass, uh, some of the ice in the top. Let's just take that one and see, and see what we get. There we go. Now, you can see the richness in that colour because we're backlighting this, um, this whisky and the light is coming through it and making all those nice amber golden colours come through. I'm going to try a little bit more ice in there actually and uh, just stack it up a little bit because the ice kind of makes this image to me um, and see if we can I'm going to put two blocks in there and see what that does. And again, let's have a look at that. There we go. I think that image is pretty much there. I mean, I think you'll agree it's, it's kind of an interesting image. Maybe we've got a little bit too much whiskey in there. We should take some out. Um, so let's just try that. I want, to, I want to put my fingers there so I know where, exactly where to put my glass. I'm just going to take some out. About half of it. Always a good idea to have a bowl. I should have drunk that, shouldn't I? I just pour it inside of the bowl. What a ridiculous! I move my fingers. What a fool! What a fool! Now I've got to line all that up again. I've done a bad job, to be honest. It's pretty much where it needs to be. There we go. Perfect. Now let's just try that again. See what we get this time. It's better with more in actually. Let's put some back. Let's put some back. Uh, and I've made a spillage. We've got a spillage. Right, okay. This is why we have products like this lying around. Playing with liquids and camera gear. Not my not my forte. Going back to the lake experience. Let's just try that one more time. There we go. 
I quite like that. I think maybe if anything, I'm going to just move the move the camera a little bit so that I get more of the um, more of the reflection in that image. Let's just move it down and drop it a touch. Let's just try that again. I mean, to be honest. We're using camera um, shutter speed so high, at a one, you know, over a, over a thousandth of a second. We could do this handheld. We don't need to have this on a tripod. It's lazy to have it on a tripod. It's a good idea to have it tri on a tripod so it doesn't move. But you could really do this just handheld. But I'm going to move, move this tripod back a little bit because it's a, it's a prime lens. And uh, just see if I can get an image. It's got just a bit more space around it. Let's loosen that off a touch. That allows me to move the camera. There we go. I'm kind of handheld, but it's on the tripod. There we go. So that's it. Um, you know, this image is the one we've taken. Here it is. I think. Um, you know, for a bit of an exercise, what's that taking? It was about 20 minutes um, to set up, to, to take the pictures, and now I can um, relax for the rest of the evening and make sure that that whiskey and this little bit here doesn't go back in that decanter. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. It is different to what we do normally. There's no light room, no Photoshop, no walking through the woods. Um, but uh, yeah, on a, on, a, on a cold, wet day, we always need something to keep our photography mind active and, and this is a great way just to do something a little bit different. If you've liked what we've done, um, just right down there, there is a, a thumbs up button. Don't, don't hesitate, please give us give it a click and uh, leave us a comment if you like what you do, Let me share some of your pictures and if, uh, if you really like it, then I'm sure you do, then hit that button down there which enables you to subscribe to our channel. That's it for this time. Um, we really hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you again soon. Cheers.